Hey guys, in this video we're going to be tackling the left column, the character creator sliders, and break down what each uh, function is on this side. Uh, so starting uh, at the top here, we have the ability to switch between human and infected. What this is doing is actually loading the skeleton, so everything is dynamically bound. Uh, which if you don't know what, I'm, what I mean there, uh, basically when you're loading in these different pieces, they're all actually being attached to the skeleton. Uh, and so it's actually attaching to the proper location that each one will be set to. Um, for this becomes really important when doing things like the child model uh, and things like the Banshee and Demolisher as it allows you to set the items to their appropriate location so you can get a better idea of what they'll look like in the Dying Light 2 game. Uh, you also have the category and then you have the class system. So these are set up in the code to allow you to filter down the different sliders. So for example, if we want to set this to man and then we want to set the class to peacekeeper, this will filter all of the different sliders here to where you have items that are very specific to the PK. Um, and so each one of these different items can load in very specific armor pieces uh, that you would commonly see on the peacekeepers. Uh, this is really good for creating uniforms and you know finding specific armor pieces that you can always go in here and once you find the piece that you're trying to find you can always set this back to all um, and it should actually maintain that uh, that different piece. So uh, if you move this piece you're gonna have to go find it again in the list as these sliders are being updated each time. Um, so just be aware that if you move that slider again, as I was just demonstrating, it will actually change um, the index there because it's not the exact same. So it'll look different. So if you do change that slider, you'll have to go back and filter back down, or you can just find it in the list of, uh, of different armors here. One of the ways to also kind of see the names of these as you go is by switching to the variation uh, builder so that when you have this and you're moving you can see over there on the right it's actually changing the name uh, so you can actually see the name of the different items uh, and become a little bit more familiar with what these different names are uh, it may help in the future when you're trying to reference the different pieces as you're going through here you can filter down the different pieces by going to the filter bar here at the, at the bottom and so if you press this first one is the everything or the all button and then these other ones uh, please let me know your feedback on these simple icons that I've added uh, to try to kind of summarize what each one does uh, the camera will adjust with each one uh, and so looking for feedback here as well of you know what your thoughts are for the camera system and how easy it is to move and manipulate the system uh, if you have any thoughts or recommendations happy to hear your feedback and when you filter down the different lists so say for example we've selected pants this will now allow you to only update the pants and you can use things like the reroll button or the random roll uh, to load in the different pants that are available in those sliders. So when you set these different ones, you can go in here and say like peacekeeper and then select the pants again. And so when you're hitting random roll, it's only showing the different pants specific to the peacekeepers um, and kind of re-rolling re through those. And so it's a very easy way to try to add very uh, specific looks. Um, kind of a common thing with the sliders and something you should be aware of is that each one of these uh, different groups has a slider associated with it. So for example with the peacekeepers uh, because there are no peacekeepers that have specific shoe items so shoes are not something that's like a common thing uh, for the NPCs that's a player thing. Um, so because of that you can see here that we have a pair of shoes that's kind of clipping through our pants here. What that is coming from is where on the other slider before we filtered these down uh, there was shoes. So if we go back to this main one, you can see if we set this to all, here's our shoes showing up. And so the reason you end up with those clipping through is because they're set in a different um, in a different panel. Uh, so you do need to make sure that when you're filtering down or changing these different ones, just be aware that it's very easily uh, it's very easy to have uh, meshes that cannot be changed, kind of stuck in space. Uh, I, there's a lot of benefits for this system and making sure like, for example, if you want to go random roll specific areas of the body versus changing other ones, this allows you to basically not update or force update all of the sliders at once. 
Um, and this makes it a lot easier when you're mixing and matching different presets. But I'll go into that more in depth when I do the preset video. Um, so when you're doing the reroll, you can also go in here and lock the different ones. So if you find a head that you like, you can always go in here and set that to lock. And also it will create the variation uh, if a variation uh, is available. So these are generated from the base code of the game. Uh, so these are all the different looks and appearances that show up in the base game uh, using Dying Light or inside Dying Light 2. You can actually create variations as well. So I'll show a video later on how you can create your own variations. And when you create a new variation, it will show up at the end of this uh, scroll bar. So anything that you add past these base ones will show up at the very end. So say we found one that we really like, uh, we can then go and hit reroll. So you can see here that all of the different hairs are not selected uh, with the lock. And so when we press this, it will go through all the different hairs. Uh, if you get a null reference, that's where it's trying to load a model from the JSON data that doesn't currently exist uh, with the models. This is common when you're, there's an update. Um, and so it's something that I'm still trying to make sure that there's access to these files um, across all the JSON data. And so it's, it's one of those things where I'm having to go pretty much, you know, uh, item by item and sort those things. So with time and feedback, you know, the more you guys let me know uh, that you were scrolling through a very specific slider and you got that notification, those are things that I can go check on my on the back end inside the engine and quickly fix. Um, so just a heads up on that. Uh, for removing these items, so if we actually go in here and hit the delete button, you can see that it clears out everything uh, for the different uh, sliders that you have currently loaded. So if you select the everything tab and all of your categories are set to, for example, all, all on classes and hit delete, it will completely remove all of your loaded sliders. If you only want to remove specific ones, you can just select very specific ones in the list and you can also re-roll all of them. Now, I would highly recommend not doing this if you're trying to make a player, uh, especially if you've got the category set to all, because more than likely there are several models in here that will actually cause uh, the system to crash and it won't actually load into the main menu. That's very likely to happen. Um, if you are trying to create like an NPC, uh, you're more likely to be able to get away with doing this and just loading in on an NPC than you are the player. Uh, the player actually does have limited number of slots that can be occupied. Uh, a lot of my code is doing most of that uh, to support that, but just be aware of the fact that if it does crash when you load in at any time, you can press F12. Uh, and so when you press F12, it doesn't currently make a noise, but in the background, it is actually making a crash report and what this crash report will show, um, if we open this up, is it's actually making a list of all of the different items that are applied. If you send me something like this and it's a list of endless items uh, and you've just re-rolled it, uh, it's going to be a lot of pain and suffering to basically go figure out which exact model caused the crash. Um, so what I would recommend is, is when you're Loading in your player, if you haven't re-rolled, if you've gone through and you've selected each one of these things, uh, if you've gone through and you've selected a specific look and you found uh, that you've set a specific hair, you've, spe you've set a specific item on your character and you hit launch and you get a crash or it's not loading in properly, you can always go back and start to reset some of these. So uh, you can use the keyboard up and down here to actually scroll through the different ones. It may help you go through and set these different sliders. Um, but you can also press zero on here uh, and it will actually uh, zero out the entry. So I'll be expanding that system in the future to make that a little bit more um, easy to use. But if you press zero on any one of these, it will uh, remove whatever setting is on the slider. That will probably be set to delete here in the future. So that is the basic video for using this left panel. At any time, you can switch uh, between what you can load in. So uh, for example, you can switch to the infected and then set the category to something like biter. And then all of your settings on the sliders will be set to um, be the biter uh, enemies. Uh, some of these are um, going to show up as humans, but basically that's where there's a variation applied to them uh, that is the infected. 
if you see this common one, so this is after the latest update, um, this is where there is a mismatch between the actual model and the actual JSON data. Um, I'll explain this a little bit more in a presets video, um, and, I'll, and I'll actually go into it in more in depth when you're doing the variation video. Um, but for now, just be aware that the issue is because it is essentially trying to load the JSON data onto a model that does not have the proper index. And I'm not sure how they're actually setting this up inside the Dying Light 2 game to where this corrects naturally, uh, because the model should actually have the same index to the JSON. So I'm not sure what the issue is there, um, but I'm still looking into ways to manually fix that. All right, guys, and then last, if you do see a white texture, so if you're loading this up, pants are the most common one. If you are sliding through here and you see one that's got a complete white texture, that is where there is basically, I'm making room for the material itself so that when you load into the game, uh, this will load in proper when you actually load the game, but inside the engine, there's either a typo or there wasn't a texture that could be programmatically found. Uh, and so because of that, uh, the most common one are the threads. Uh, but because of that, each one of these, basically, I have to go and figure out um, for each one what material actually belongs on these pants. You guys can be happy. You guys can uh, help me out with this if you like. Now that I have the filter, is actually faster to use the system here than it is to do it on the back end. Uh, and so you guys can actually help me solve this. Um, so if you do see a white pair of pants and it is one that you really want to use inside the game, these are things that can be fixed. Um, I'll go into more depth here, but basically, uh, you switch to the variation tab here, and it should default to materials. And here you can see the name of the model. Essentially, all you have to do from here is go in and you could start to type in something like pants. And you can see here that we have a pretty long list of pants here. Uh, but essentially one of these, if we click this one here, uh, one of these is the proper pair of pants um, or the proper material for these pants. Uh, sadly, from most of the programmatic solutions I've looked for for trying to find this pair of pants, uh, I wasn't able to find an easy way to locate the exact texture that goes on these. Um, and so a lot of this is going to come down to trying to match visually the different uh, materials to the actual models uh, so that they can be manually assigned. Uh, that does make it very difficult for updates in the future. So if an update comes out with new models and they continue to run into this issue, it's something that can't be solved for immediately. So it is kind of down to this, like, you know, having to manually go through each one, very time consuming. And uh, I'm not expecting anybody in the community to do this, but I'm just mentioning that this is essentially the process that has to be used um, until we identify which ones, uh, because there's not actual files to reference uh, for these applied textures. Um, so this, for example, is, is there wasn't one called pants, so more than likely there's one called leg or legs. Um, so you can just kind of continue to go through the list here. Uh, and if you happen to find which one actually goes on here, should you actually want to do this, you can always press F12 at this point. So you say, or say you're going through here and you actually find the one that matches uh, this pair of pants um, and you want to share that with me. All you have to do is once you find that, you can press F12. And if we load back up our crash reports, um, just grab the one from this latest time. And you can see here, this is our model and this is the material that was applied to it. So if you find ones that work, uh, it would be a big help if you can send this to me and just let me know like, hey, I found a match, it's this one, um, and I'll go update that in the code and we'll get it set up to where it doesn't show up as a white material anymore. All right, guys, I believe this is a basic video. Sorry that it went a little bit longer than I was expecting, but I believe this is a good start for the left side panel. Thanks, guys. Look forward to hearing your guys' feedback.